important with a number. It's three billion trees. That's Yale University counted the trees uh, recently. And that's quite a big number. It's, uh, it's like 422 trees for every living person on Earth. So there are a lot of trees. And it's hard to imagine a world without them, and it's hard to imagine any outdoor picture without trees. So it's important to get them right. Yet trees are incredibly complex organisms. I have incredibly complex branching structures with a lot of polygons, millions of polygons, and um, their materials are equally complex with a mix of uh, glossy, diffuse, translucency, which are all translucency, for example, is not very easy on computers. Um, so it's, it's not been easy, but let's take a look at how we've been trying to create trees up until now. So my name is Vibrun van Keulen, by the way. I, uh, I, uh, normally I create uh, visuals and animations for architects, designers, landscapers, every, everyone with something to show to the world. And uh, I've been doing this for 13 years now, and Blender has been my trusty steed every single day of this 13 years. I'm really glad about it. Um, so, during this 13 years, I've seen quite some uh, technological advances that made life a lot better, and also which changed the way we work. Like ambient occlusion, it's an old one, but it really was a big step forward in realism and it gave our images much more depth. But nothing compares to cycles, which is the single best thing to ever happen to Blender. And finally, realistic in outdoor lighting and indirect lighting was fast enough to be used in production. I mean, we had global illumination before, but you couldn't really use it for deadline projects. So it was a game changer. Unfortunately, to realistically use it in, in production, matching hardware was needed. And so Cycles also gave us massive headaches and uh, driver madness. I had to switch from <laughs> OS X to Linux to even Windows now. It's, ah, yeah, four of them. I had five once, but, <laughs> but it was worth it. I mean, uh, Cycles is absolutely worth it. So Cycles has changed my workflow dramatically. Um, just years ago, I would Photoshop uh, skies, nature, people, even reflections in the windows. It's all Photoshopped. And uh, because now we can do much more of that, of those things in, in 3D, I see a split is forming where one of, some of us uh, try to do everything in 3D for total realism and others try to go the other way for the artistic style and nothing in between really, yeah. So the hardest part of the switch has been nature and especially trees and um, I think a lot of artists have been struggling like, with it. And it's been itching me for a really long time, for years and years. And I spent so much time uh, this past decade in hunting ways to get the best trees. And uh, well, as I told, uh, trees just do look dead without translucency. So we needed a good renderer first. And uh, we also needed systems that could handle these amounts of polygons. So th those, the complexity made, made, made that uh, cut out images were the way to go for many years. And um, after that, I tried stock models. Uh, I bought a lot of models and they, they are kind of cool, but mm, not so natural. So I tried, I tried a couple of, uh, of those programs in, that were used to create those trees and, and like sapling is all best. There are some really nice programs, but uh, yeah, okay, let's, let's take a look at some of the three programs that are out there. So, so like you can, you can categorize them in three basic, that there are more ways of doing it, but the most of the software do it in a recursive L system, fractal, mathematical, like you define a main branch, you say it's got so many sub branches and they are so long and well, it's, it's a lot of work to, to do that stuff. Um, and recursive systems are really good for pine trees and really repetitive trees and uh, young trees also. But uh, when trees go older, their, their branching structure is just, it, it's, the distribution isn't right. 
Space colonization was a really good one that solved this problem. Like the distribution was really, really good. But it's not natural as well. And trees designer, uh, I'll not, I'm not going to talk about that. It's really cool, but it, it has its, uh, its own look. So I just couldn't seem to get natural trees with any of those tools. Um, and it's because that the to uh, focus of all those tools was on, on total user control and interaction. Uh, the total, the, the user had all the control over the tree, so you had to define how long the trunk is, how thick it's at the base, how thick it's at the, at the top, and it's a lot of work to, to build a tree. And that seems n uh, nice in the beginning, but uh, like the total control, but in the end it's, it makes it a painful job, and especially for all the trees. Okay, so there was one really, 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 really nice program out there for the iPad, TreeSketch. Um, it allowed you to kind of grow trees, and it, it was really nice, but even TreeSketch's focus was on total user control, and you had to sketch your branches by multi-touch. So, as Jonathan Williamson so nicely put it in his presentation last year, it was time to finally scratch my own itch and time to put nature back in control. What I wanted, you know, yeah, the moral of the story is that I don't want to model trees, I want to grow trees. And I wanted trees that work well on GPUs because, well, we all like, like GPUs. So when I finally had some time last year, after last year's conference, inspiring conferences. I uh, finally uh, gave it a go and I started coding. And uh, just one week in, I got this exciting spaghetti tree. <laughs> so for one week's work, yeah, okay. But it's, it, it, it was so exciting that I just had to continue this and it kind of ran out of hand. And um, I told, asked my girlfriend this, I, I totally got obsessed by trees and uh, I couldn't talk about anything else. I read a lot of scientific papers and anything I could find on trees. There's not a lot, of, a lot of information on how trees grow, by the way, weirdly. So uh, over a couple of over a year of frantic development and total rewrites and a couple of lines of code, I had uh, this. Ah, no sound. Sorry. So, uh, nature is back in control, I guess. Um, the growth. Instead of, grow, uh, of, instead of modeling, I wanted something to grow trees. And um, the growth does this by simulating the seasons. Each year, it first grows new twigs. And um, then, second, it bends those twigs based on how much more weight they carry. And before growing another year, it first prunes the weak branches and uh, makes, makes a, an airy branching structure of the tree. And especially when growing older, uh, those three steps really make a difference. Like uh, to, to get a, an airy structure, otherwise branches will collapse into each other and it will not look natural. And uh, so the first result by Mason Menzies, very talented artist, I really enjoyed this picture. 
Um, so let's take a look, closer look at some of the simulation steps that um, the Grove does. Okay, like nature. Um, Grove, uh, all right. It starts by, by one branch. It, 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 it consists of a, little, uh, a couple of nodes. Uh, the, the leaves, uh, they are the places where the nodes are. And in between the leaves and a branch are tiny buds. Those tiny buds are next year's twigs. And um, those have a chance to open up next year and, uh, well, grow another branch. And those have the same buds. And that all repeats over and over and over. So grow. Is, uh, couple, is, is, is the same as in almost every other software. Like I, uh, there's, there's features like, um, like philotaxis, gravitropism, branch ang angle op opposite and alternate branching. That's all, there are, there are a lot of par parameters like the branch angle is the simplest. I mean, the angle between the, the parent branch, it's easy, but yeah. So um, there are a lot of parameters that, that define a tree's character, but Still, it's one of the easiest and fastest ways to grow trees. So let's see, uh, let's grow a tree in Blender and let's see what happens when you grow a tree. You can define the amount of years you want to uh, simulate, so let's go bring it back to one so we can see what's going to happen. What I'm doing is just, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, now I can see it myself. That's not very, very useful. I'm just going to press this button, and what you'll see... Uh, that simulate, right? Okay, you can, see the, you can see the tree appearing in the lower, lower part of the screen. So when I press grow, 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 you see that some branches start bending under the weight, and others get pruned away. And um, well, you just continue doing this until you, you're satisfied. And it gets, the growth algorithm gets better when trees go older and older, like young trees in nature are also very erratic and very chaotic. And when, when, when they grow older, let's add a couple of more years, they grow more beautiful. Oh, we're spinning. And it also takes exponentially more time to grow new branches because what you, what you don't see is that all those little twigs that are created, hundreds of them, 90% of them do not survive for the next year. So I'm, I'm, I'm creating a lot of branches and I'm deleting almost every one of them and then I'm growing a lot of branches again and that's what's happening. So let's get back to, blend, to my presentation. There it is. Okay. So true to its name, the Grove also, non-native English speakers do not know what the Grove means, by the way. That's, that's I, I discovered that. A, a Grove is a small group of trees, like an orchard or a small forest or a couple of trees. A lot of shopping malls in America are called the Grove because there were some trees before. That's <laughs> <laughs> and, um, well, when you grow trees together, they form a combined crown, and um, it's really more beautiful. It's 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 more natural to grow a couple of trees together. Oh, this is going to be difficult. I, I want to show that now. So, oh, this is going to be too difficult. No, I'm going to stick to my presentation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, wait. Okay, sorry. I'm, um, I'll just move back to... This is going to take... Um, uh, this one. Okay. This will work. Yay. Oh, small buttons. All right, so back to growing multiple trees at once. Ah, this is better. Um, you can uh, add uh, empty objects and uh, select them before you start the growth. And then when you start the growth, they will de it will detect them and you can grow trees together. 
just like this. And just let it grow. And then we've got something that they can, you can see that they grow together and they try to avoid each other because of, only because of the pruning. They do not actually try to avoid each other, but branches get close, they get pruned, and that's how it works. Okay. Um, back to this, this one. Yes. Um, play? Yeah. All right, so, so growing groups of trees together, that's impossible with stock models, and uh, it, it will make your seams more natural. Um, pruning, pruning, pruning uh, turned out to be in extremely important. It's, it's one of the most important things that makes uh, the, the growth, sets the growth apart, and it's, uh, it's basically the exact opposite of, uh, of, of uh, space colonization. I know no, who's familiar with space colonization, but it's like you distribute a lot of particles in the scene, and the, tri the, the tree tries to find particles and grabs them out of the scene, and then that way it grows towards those particles and uh, you get a nice distribution by that. But it's, um, it's not really natural because you lose the branching angles and a lot of more of that stuff. Um, so uh, this has a, it has a cost. It takes more time to calculate, and, but it's time well worth it. So, um, yeah, let's imagine a tree without pruning. I mean, it would if every bud was to grow a new twig, and, and those twigs, with all their buds, would also grow a new twig. The tree would, would soon become a, a huge ball of leaf and, and, and branch, and it will, would, would, would snap under its own weight. It would, it's, it's important, that's it. So, um, uh, so the, the, uh, most of all, uh, I think all other algorithms, they try to put branches in the right place at the right at, at one time in one go either to uh, to save time or to give the user the total control but nature equals chaos everyone knows this and uh, so instead of reaching equilibrium in, in one go we need to first go through chaos so we have to grow branches like crazy and then we decide which ones to keep and real physical bending, it, it was, it's also uh, the first that, that, that a tree software has physical bending, and I, I can imagine why, because it's, it's really weird in trees. Like it, the bending is not just bending on the weight, but it's also that trees, uh, the branches, they try to compensate for bending by, uh, by growing more tissue places where there's much bending. So it tries to compensate for, for, the, for gravity. And I try to, try to, I spend a lot of time to try to get that into the growth. And it's still not perfect, but it works well. But it's not, uh, it's still itching. So bending and pruning, uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, the bending and pruning together is what, what, what makes a natural tree. Because when trees, when branches bend, constantly changes the distribution of branches. Like some branches get closer to each other, otherwise others get pulled apart. And when branches get closer, they cast shadow on each other, and that's what, what yeah, that's, that, that has a large influence. So bending in action. No, let's not do that. You, you know, you've seen it in the trailer, and I have to do all the screen stuff again. Um, flow. Um, flow is a, is, a, is, a, is a bit more difficult to understand, but it's actually quite easy. Uh, trees, they control growth by hormones. And to get this, you can best think of trees as a collection of one-year plants. I mean, the twigs, that, that, that are the, ones, the, the branches that are new this year, they have the flowers, they have the fruits, they have the leaves, everything. That's, it's just a plant. It's, it's, a, it's a normal plant. And um, the thing that sets them apart from normal plants is the branching structure that connects them all. It's like a, like a plumbing system that, that uh, pulls water up to the leaves and on the other way it distributes hormones. Like the tips of branches, they produce a lot of hormone and it stops other branches down the road from growing and gives precedence to the ones that are reaching for the light. Which brings me to apical dominance. This is 
the single best scientific name ever. It's not from a shoot 'em up game. It's it's awesome. And well, I got ahead of my game and I just explained what it was. It's 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 the tip of the branch that distributes the hormones to tell them to keep low. I want to grow to the light. And uh, without without brakes, by the way, the, the, this auxin hormone, it's it, 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 it's the break of the tree. Without those hormones, a tree would grow like crazy. It would like burst. And there are science, scientists that are trying to to alter trees to grow faster and, and for the wood. But this is what this is what makes it. Um, so, especially when a seedling is still under the ground, it, it, uh, when it's dark and it, it can't find any light, it will grow like crazy to the, to the surface. And when it hits light, it will keep chilling and will just grow down. So, in this example, the tree doesn't favor side branches nor current branches. It's just every, every, every branch gets the same, same favor. And uh, it, it results in a round shrub-like sh shape. <laughs> uh, it, and um, yeah, so and, and, and here's another example by increasing the apical dominance, and it produces a completely different shape, more of a pyramidal pine shape. So hormonal controls like these make a huge difference, and it's with almost no user input. Uh, you, you, you don't have to change any of the parameters during growth. You can just click, 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 and then you can uh, alter it. And it's easy. Interact. Um, so, so far, we've uh, based our, the shape of our tree on uh, solely the DNA of the tree. But um, the tree's shape is heavily influenced also by its environment. And, um, the environment is where artistic control comes back into play. I mean, you all want some control. And uh, so you can set up an object, object that can, it can be any object, any blender object. It can deflect, it can attract, and it can block new growth. So you can, uh, you can make uh, trees in different shapes, or you can, can avoid buildings, or you can do many things. So that's powerful control, but in a very natural way. Not, not you don't have to, yeah, it's it's easier. Um, so build after simulation. I'm using the simulated data to create a, a 3D model. Very very logical. Um, every branch becomes a curve, and every node of each branch will become a curve node. And then I add thickness to every node. And uh, that's also done, it's more, uh, tree sketch has a similar way of doing it. it instead of uh, defining the base of the tr trunk, uh, it has to be this wide. And then, no, you start at the top. You start at the tips, they have a thickness, and every node adds a little bit of thickness. And when it reaches a branching point, it will then use an exponential function to join, blend those two thicknesses. And this gives correct results at every age, and you never have to tweak it. Um, so, twigs, as I said earlier, they are very, ooh, ooh, okay, very different from, from the rest. So, um, uh, in my system, I hand model twigs. I don't think you can make twigs with uh, software. It's, it's, you, you can use your own tools that you like and you can model all the berries, all the fruit, all the leaves yourself and that will make it much be more beautiful. So by distributing these kind of models, you only have one of those models in memory and your, your CPU memory or your GPU memory will be saved and it's much lighter. Um, so I use the 3D scans as a base for, for creating these twigs, and, uh, but those are very, 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 very crappy. I use them uh, solely for, uh, for the, the scale and how the leaves are folding and stuff, so I model over them. And I spend quite some time on them, especially on flowering twigs, and um, I'm not holding back on the details. And twigs are really beautiful when you study them up close. It's uh, very intriguing. Yes. 
Sometimes an apical and a lateral twig. That's that's the, 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 the uh, either from the tip of the of the branch or from the side of the branch. Those are sometimes and some species very different, like flowering trees. Yeah. And uh, well, that's no, I don't have time for that. Um, yeah, the development was was a was a really a joy. It took me over a year. And uh, it starts with the right structure and making every feature independent uh, so I could work on every feature loose. And I spent, I guess I spent even uh, equal amount of time on actual coding and on studying how trees really work. Uh, most of my ideas popped out uh, up on the bike race at home from my studio. So uh, it's packed with trees, all kinds of trees. And um, after a day of coding and finally getting stuck, I would go home and uh, I would watch trees and real trees would give me the answers. And uh, the funny thing is I, I did most of the coding in my sleep, I think. I, 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 I cracked all of the difficult, really difficult mathematical medics in my head and when I arrived at, at work the next day, I just, where did that come from? So it was already, uh, but it was also very, very stressful. I mean, that bike ride, ride reminded me of all the tree shapes that I still had to cover, and it, it, ah, so many work, so much work. But at last, the last, last rides home were really, really cool. Like, I got you, I, I cracked you, ah, I own you. <laughs> the Python API is very, very good, thanks. It really works, and... Um, but tabs have really pushed away the tool options. I mean, tool options are very important. They are in a, in a corner, you have to press a small little plus, five by five pixels to find them, so skip the rest. Um, so I had a very, very, very quick proof of concept, but it took many months to really create, I realized early on that this is going to take a lot of time. So I, had a, I, had a, I took a risk. I, I hold, held off many freelance projects to get this finished because this was something I was really passionate about. And it was the start of an adventure. What's next? Um, a lot of obvious features that everyone wants. I mean, it's, it's autumn now, so I'm, I'm creating autumn twigs first, but the leaves will be so soon be gone, and then I'll be adding new features like more interesting trunk shapes and uh, say, uh, cre creating a better interface for, for handling multiple trees at once and uh, like with time offsets with different species at, at, at one time. And of course, breeze and wind. That's what everyone wants, but I'm trying to get a, a nice way to implement this without it being sucky. So. Almost done. Um, yeah, and after launch, I got so many, many of the same questions. Like uh, a lot of, a lot of questions were on UV mapping and on, on branch resolution. Uh, I've got a lot of response from games companies, but I bet I did not uh, expect. So uh, the next release will, uh, it's almost done. So I'm, I'm working on uh, a new meshing uh, to replace the curves, and it will have perfect UV unwrapping and. Nice root profiles and uh, twisting of trunks and kept tips, like uh, everyone wanted kept tips. And um, well, that's it. I have a 20% discount until tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm around and you can uh, ask me for a demo for uh, growing stuff and stuff. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Uh, and, I, and I knew I was going to run into time problems, so I had the boring stuff at the end, so...